All right, so you just got a brand new Japanese knife. Congrats, that's amazing. Japanese knives are a lot of fun, uh, but there's a few things you wanna make sure that you don't do with them. So I'm gonna show you a few things today that you wanna avoid to prevent your knife from going from this to this. So a big reason why Japanese knives are so amazing is because they're made from very hard steel and because of that steel, they can make the knife super thin. Now that makes the knife crazy sharp and really smooth when you're cutting uh, tomatoes, carrots, vegetables, meat, everything. But that hardness and that thinness also makes them a little bit more fragile. So here's seven things to not do with your Japanese knife. Number seven, using a super hard material as a cutting board like glass. Uh, glass or bamboo or granite countertops are really bad for your knife. When you're using the knife on a hard surface, every time you hear that smacking sound, that's your knife crying in pain. Uh, harder surfaces will blunt the edge faster. So get rid of this. So use a softer surface, uh, wood or plastic, is best. Wood, we really like these end grain boards where you can see the rings of the wood. Um, avoid super, super hard, dense woods. Um, that's why bamboo's bad because it's too dense, but most woods and most plastic boards will do just fine. Number six, storing your knife unprotected. Chuck it in a drawer, just raw dog it. That's really bad for your knife because it's run, gonna run into all sorts of other utensils and that can dull or even chip your blade. So grab yourself a plastic blade guard like so, pop your knife in there, Boom, nice and protected. Other options work great too. Start in a knife block. Just be careful sliding it into the block so you don't ding the tip on the inside. You can throw them up on a knife magnet like so. Fancy display stand. Just make sure that that edge is protected and you're protected when your knife's being stored. Number five, leaving your knife dirty for a long time. There's a few reasons for this. If you have bits of vegetable that are crusted on your knife when you go to clean it off, scrubbing and getting in aggressively, it can scratch up your knife, but you can also slip and cut yourself, which you don't want. Even stainless steel knives can rust. Now, some Japanese knives are made from what we call high carbon steel. It's a really amazing traditional high performance steel, but it can rust in a matter of minutes or even seconds if you leave it dirty. Even with stainless steel, uh, even really good quality stainless steel, it can rust if it's left dirty or wet for too long. So make sure that when you're using your knife, you just give it a wipe and dry it as soon as you can and then put it away safely. Number four is the scrape and twist. These are two movements with your knife that you want to avoid doing on the cutting board. This is one I see folks doing a lot and I even do it myself sometimes where you're cutting and you're cutting and you're cutting and then you want to make some more room and you do that guy across the cutting board. That sound is another bad sign from your knife and it means that you're taking that edge and you're just folding it right over like that. And so that obviously is going to make your knife dull. So instead, cut, 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 lift your knife a little bit and then slide. Or alternatively, do your cuts, flip your knife upside down, scrape all day with the spine, you're not gonna have any problems. Twisting, generally you'll see when you're getting into like a big squash uh, and things get, the knife gets stuck and wedged and people try to pry it back and forth, that can ding up the knife for sure or bend it. I also see it when folks are mincing things on a cutting board like garlic or herbs and they're really pressing and torquing the knife as they're doing that. You don't need to apply pressure on the top of the knife uh, when you're mincing something. You just let your hand kind of gently sit on top and stop the knife from bouncing up on you. And that's gonna be much better for the edge of your knife. So remember, when you're cutting, Straight, gentle, sliding motions is always what you want to see. Number three is the dishwasher. This bad boy is real bad for your knives. Uh, when you chuck a knife in here, like so, it does a few things. Much like the drawer, it's gonna rattle around and get dulled or even dinged up and chipped, uh, but the heat and the moisture are both super bad for the knife. And again, even a stainless steel knife can rust in the right conditions, and this is the right condition to rust your knife. So, wash by hand, always avoid the dishwasher. Number two, you don't want to cut really hard or frozen foods. Uh, because the steel is really hard and really thin, it's a bit like glass. You know, glass is really hard, but it's not that strong. It's fairly brittle. Uh, and hard steel is very similar. It doesn't have the flexibility required to take a hit. And so hard foods, when the thin edge runs into it, they can chip. So things like uh, avocado pits or bones or stems on squash, you know, even Parmesan rinds can be too hard sometimes. Uh, frozen food is even worse because it makes the steel cold, which makes it even more brittle. So if you cut something really hard or frozen like this, it can chip your knife and you're gonna be sad. So if you have to cut something really hard or frozen, use softer steel, uh, maybe a meat cleaver, for example, and just be safe. Take your time, be careful. Lastly, number one, you never want to maintain or sharpen your knife with a steel rod or a pull-through sharpener. Those steel honing rods that you get with a block of knives 
can be really coarse uh, and so they can be pretty hard on the edge of a Japanese knife because the edge again is so fine, so much finer than that rough steel rod. Pull through sharpeners don't do an amazing job. They generally don't sharpen the edge all the way along so they can deform your edge. They can make the knife really thick so it doesn't cut as nicely um, and they're generally just not a great thing. You can even hear it when you use one. Uh, it just doesn't sound that good and it pulls off a lot of metal and doesn't create a very nice edge. So you want to make sure that you get your knife sharpened professionally or if you're interested, pick up a set of whetstones, watch a video on how to do it and learn to do it yourself. It's a lot easier than it seems. When it comes to keeping your knife sharp though, a ceramic coning rod is the tool you want instead of a steel rod. These guys are much harder and much finer, so they're much better suited to Japanese steel. But once a week, I'll take this guy, set my knife on it at about 15 degrees, and just hone the edge on either side, back and forth like so. Real easy, right? 10 or 20 of those, it's gonna take any bits of steel that have deformed from the edge, straighten them out a little bit, pull off any burrs that have formed, and keep your knife sharp up to twice as long as it would stay normally. Now, if something tragic happens to your knife and it goes from looking like this to looking like this, or if it just dulls faster than you think it should, bring it back to knifeware, we'll tune it up for you. The first time sharpening on any knife from us is free, and that includes chip repairs. It's your get out of jail free card, and then we can help fix up any issues that might have happened and get you set on the path to kitchen success. Again, if you want to learn to do your own sharpening, we teach classes, we have whetstones, we have videos on how to use them that are really helpful. If you want to learn more about using your knife safely and properly, check out this video on knife care basics, talking about how to clean them, what kind of cutting board to use, some basic cutting techniques, or check out this video for a more extensive lesson on knife skills. All right, now I guess I gotta take my knife in to get fixed. Naoto, can you fix this for me? Nope, thumbnail photo. I don't know if I said number seven, so I'm just gonna give you a number seven. Okay. <laughs> uh, that you can insert. Number seven.